Hello and welcome to my talk, Parametrized Hardness of Art Gallery Problems. I'm Telman Milzo and this is joint work with Edouard Bonnet and we are both from the Hungarian Academy of Science, MTA Stucky. This is my co-author, Edouard Bonnet. Um, and let me start with introducing you to the Art Gallery problem. So it originated in 1973 and Victor Klee asked how many guards are needed to cover a polygon with n vertices. So let's see here we have a polygon and then this vertex sees this region or covers that region here. Then this vertex would cover that region. And now all these um, vertices together cover the whole polygon. Um, but you can see that, for instance, this vertex is not really needed. And these two here can be replaced by that one. So six was not de definitely the minimal number, but four can be seen to be the minimal number for that polygon because um, here these crosses cannot be seen. There's no, co no pair of crosses which can be seen by uh, one guard, so we need at least um, that many guards. That Yeah, so these vertices we call guards. Yes, and that's the art gallery problem, and um, there's a huge amount of research on it, um, but for now I only want you to know that there's a very important distinction, namely very whether these vertices or these guards are placed on the vertices, like here, um, like these red ones, or they're placed anywhere in the interior, and it's the guards are called point guard. So this distinction is important for the talk. Okay, so let me go on to our result. We can prove for the point guard art gallery problem that if you parametrize by the number of guards, so you want to know can I guard with k guards, then this is not solvable in time n to the little o of k divided by log k under the exponential time hypothesis. We have the same result for the vertex guard of the gallery uh, variant, but uh, I will not present it here. Okay, so this is, um, I think, a very strong result because there is a large amount of research going on on the art gallery problem, and the point guard variant is arguably the most natural one, and um, there has been no parametrized results so far. So let's look a little bit on related work. Um, so there's a huge amount of related work, but I want to point out um, something that I find relevant. So the first thing is that you can look at the art gallery problem as for polygons without holes or with holes. So let's and for with for the case where we allow holes, there's a reduction from set cover to polygons with holes, to the art gallery problem with polygons with holes, by Adam Ben Stamm and Wittmeyer in 2001. And it goes as follows, so let's assume we have given our uh, set cover instance. Then for each element of the ground set we put, we allocate here um, a point, and for each set we allocate a point as well. And we draw the um, visibility edges and then we put a polygon around in the way that each point that corresponded to a set sees exactly um, the points which corresponded to the elements of the set. So A contained 1, 2, 3 and A can see 1, 2, 3. Um, so that's a very easy idea. You have to be a little bit careful because uh, yeah, so you have to make sure that um, everything is after you picked, you know, your A and C, which sees all these points one, two, three, four, five, so that everything else is also seen. And here the important thing why this works so easily is because we allow holes and so we've had to put here a lot of holes and without holes this cannot be done. Okay, um and um so since this is a reduction from set cover, this um, shows W2 hardness and excludes any algorithm of the form n to the little o of k under the exponential time hypothesis. So
so um, yeah, so this basically means for if you allow holds, then uh, the problem settles. We have these lower bounds already. Um, yeah. So, but let's look for the positive side. There is a algorithm for the vertex skirt variant, which I have not found uh, um, someone being attributed to it. So I would just say it's folklore. So if you want to test if a if a polygon with k uh, polygon with inverse can be guarded with k guards, you can just test all all n choose k um, possible guard placements, and then for each guard placement, you check if it actually guards everything. So here, example is four. So choose here some four vertices. And then I just check, does it cover the whole polygon? No, okay, try the next. And um, if I try all possibilities, then yeah, I, can, I have a definite answer. Um, yeah, so this is here, folklore dancing. So. Okay. Um, so this means that our result for the vertex guard variant shows that we are almost tight and there was no progress uh, for this kind of trivial algorithm. Um, although the artillery problem has been studied really a lot. So now we have an explanation for it. It was not our stupidity, but actually um, there we have a corresponding lower bound. Okay, so the same holds for the point guard variant, but it's a little more, more sophisticated and less well known. So if you have um, the point guard variant, then Michel Sharia observed that there is an O of n times k, 6k plus 3 algorithm. So basically n to the O of k. And his idea is very simple. He formulates the art color problem with the first order formula over the reals plus some algebraic machinery. So how is he doing this? I show you the first part. Um, you can, you should be aware that a variable, a guard, you can um, a model by two uh, real variables. And polygon containment is just the algebraic test, right? So you want to know, you can triangulate it, and you just ask, is it in one of these triangles? And for each triangle, you just says, is it left of this, right of this, and left of this side? And um, then you know um, um, polygon containment. So visibility test is also an algebraic test. You only have to test whether this line segment here crosses any of the boundary edges. And this can be done by determinant test, which also leads to a um, quadratic equation. And then the whole thing, so if you want to know, can it be guarded by car guards, would be, does there exist g1 to gk? So there would be 2k variables, such that for every point p, if p is in, in p, then one of those guards sees p. So if the answer to that, if that statement is true for a given polygon, then uh, it can be guarded by k. If it's no, it cannot be guarded by k guards. And then after you have this, you just use some sophisticated theorem, um, and um, that's it. Um, okay. So also here, uh, this algorithm is is not trivial because it uses algebraic machinery, but it uses no problem-specific insights. Um, it's not so well known, but it's the only known algorithm. Uh, which solves the point guard variant exactly in general. Um, and now we know there's a reason why um, there's no better algorithm um, with performance guarantees. Um, yes, and that's why um, I think our result is quite strong. Okay, so let me tell you now how how we how we prove this I want to show you the reduction for simple polygons um, and somehow this goes the reduction goes in two steps first is the reduction from subcurve isomorphism to this intermediate problem called structure two track heading set and then from structure two track heading set to the art color problem I will not tell you this first reduction it's technical and it has been done for v a lot of similar problems before, but I will explain what a structure two track heading set, and I'll show you the reduction to art color problem, but only to the point guard variant. Okay, 
So, okay, so whenever you have cluster reduction, you should start with a problem-specific insight. And here's a problem-specific insight, which is most important, is an integral graph hitting set can be reduced to the odd color problem. So what is interval graph hitting set? You've given a set of intervals and you want to hit it, you want to find points on this real line such that for each interval there's at least one point um, in this interval. So here maybe you choose a 2 and a 6 and then all, all intervals are covered. And now we can encode this in the art gallery pro uh, in the art gallery problem. So we would place for e so the, yeah for the interval graph hitting set is one observation is if I have a point let's say here can just push it further to the left, um, and um, so I can be restricted to the endpoint of these uh, intervals. So for each endpoint, I would place a, I would allocate a point. Um, somewhere in my polygon, and then for e each interval covers a certain number of points, right? So this interval goes from a1, a2, a3. So we want to have a corresponding interval p1, p2, p3, and we can realize very easily by a pocket. So basically, we would take p1, p3, somehow take a point here behind this wall, connect p1 and p3, and then the only points among those six here that can see this pocket would be p1, p2, p3. So basically, this interval told us we should choose a point among a1, a2, a3, and now this pocket tells us we should pick a point p1, p2, or p3. So this basically uh, should convince you that interval graph heading set can be encoded by the R point guard algorithm problem. So this is by itself not so interesting because interval graph heading set is polynomial time solvable, but um, it's the first step. So now um, this ho whole thing from polynomial time solvable becomes NB hard as soon as you go from uh, interval heading set to two track heading set. So let me tell you what is two track heading set. Here we have one uh, real line, let's say, and another real line. On each real line we have some intervals. So let's say here three. And then we have also points on each interval. And these points are linked somehow magically. So this point is linked here, this point is linked there, and so on. And the idea is, um, whenever I pick uh, a point on track A, I have automatically also to pick the uh, point on track B, which is magically linked to the same point. Um, yes, and um, so this problem is be hard, and the um, idea from a very far apart perspective would be okay we allocate points for track A, we allocate points for track B, we somehow magically link them and put pockets for um, the intervals in track B and pockets for the intervals in track A. And this magic linking, okay to be a little bit more uh, mathematical is just the permutation. Um, yeah, so this would be the the uh, faraway idea, the very high-level idea. And this magic linking, however, seems pretty tough. So it seems to be very difficult to achieve that um, we can link any arbitrary points. So what we do instead is we don't link everything, so we just link certain things, and then it goes to structure two-track hitting set, and the idea is to make this la magic linking a little bit more restricted so that we can code it. So here the idea is that um, the elements on track A are partitioned into color classes, K color classes, and the same happens for the elements on track B. And color classes are always consecutive and have the same size. And then um, certain classes here are connected, so this green with this green, this red with this red, this orange with orange, and the turquoise with turquoise. And the magic linking takes place only between any two elements on the same color. So there would be a magic link between these tur two turquoise, or, bet or between any of these red and uh, any of the orange. And we can show that this problem is still W1 hard and has this lower bound under 
the exponential time hypothesis. And now, yeah, when I pick this element here, I have to pick that element as well. Okay, yeah, and again, each individual color class is permuted, and also the color class can be arbitrarily permuted here on the bottom. Okay, so now how do we reduce? Uh, it's pretty straightforward. Um, so the first idea is that maybe, okay, we have here for track A, we allocate some uh, some part of the polygon where all these intervals can be placed far to the right and the same for track B. Then some magic linking goes here on horizontally, uh, like here and here and here as well. Don't tell you yet how this goes, but then here um, this guy sees this point and you can see uh, uh, both tracks is the correct order. So because I can permute you these order of these boxes, I can arrange any order and still um, points from the same color class um, are above uh, each other. So here the orders orange, red, green, turkeys, orange, red, green, turkeys, and here it's green, orange, red, turkeys, green, orange, red, turkeys. I think that's pretty straightforward, so let's go to the next one. Let's focus on how do we do the linking between between uh, one color. And also here things are not so difficult. It, we just reuse the trick that I showed you before. So on the bottom we go one, two, three, four, just upwards. And then here we we so this element one bar it should be on track B, I think it is, uh, track A, it should be here on the second position, so we put the second highest Y coordinate, and then 2 should have, so here from left to right they have increasing X coordinate, but the Y coordinate corresponds to its position uh, on track, on the track. So same trick repeated, um, and in this way we can for um, each um, two element on the two structure true hedging set, we can allocate two points. So now we have to link them. And before I explain you how to link them, I want you to explain um, some some re kind of related simple uh, problem. So here we have um, S1, we have elements on S1 and we want to um, link opposite elements so that um, all these intervals are um, covered if and only if I cover it with two opposite intervals. So here maybe a solution would be one one bar, two, two bar, or three, three bar, but not one, two bar. And what I do is just all my intervals going to be half circles. So this intervals here they just are exactly half circles and I put all possible half circles here. And now what happens is, if I don't choose opposite, let's say I choose 1 and 2 bar, then either on the left or on the right side, there is one interval which is not covered. So I really have to cover opposite. I can only choose two opposite points in order to cover all the intervals. So, yeah, that's very simple. So let's see how we can use this. Uh, so we have here our points at the bottom, 1, 2, 3, and then these points we want to link them to. So what we do is um, we have here a point L which sees the points in the order 1, 2, 3, 1 bar, 2 bar, 3 bar, and the point R which sees them in the opposite order 1 bar, 2 bar, 3 bar, 1, 2, 3. And we will um, all these intervals which we have here we will place at L and R. So for instance this interval 1, 2, 3 we can place somewhere here because you can see there's, uh, there would be a, uh, we can easily build a pocket which can see 1, 2, 3 by just doing something like this here. And also 2, 3, 1 bar because yeah, you just see it here. And if you make some smaller map, they will all fit in here. And the same we do here at R, and you have to place them somewhere around R. Um, having very little space. And in this way you can uh, encode all these intervals and then the only way to see 
um, all these intervals is to choose two points, one from here, one from there, and they must be i and i bar. Okay, so this is nice. Now we, we've linked them. And let's see now how this big picture looks like. So I told you so far, so we go from structure to track hitting set. We place our boxes first so that the order on track A and track B is correct. So then for each color class we place the points on track B increasingly and here we do the permutation accordingly to the magic linking between the color class. For each color class on the top we, we put these linking gadgets and here on the right for track A and track B we we encode the original intervals. So that is pretty easy I'd say. Um, but there is one big gap that I didn't tell you about so far. Namely, um, how can I enforce that someone is at this position, right? So so now everything works as long as uh, the, the, the person who plays the guards doesn't cheat and really only plays them here. But it's easily imaginable that one could place them somewhere complete, somewhere else completely. Um, yeah. So how can we force positions? Um, yeah. So one thing that could help us is, for instance, that these points are aligned, um, and then also these uh, intervals that we have here already help us. So let's have a closer look at this. So when we have all these pockets here, right, then if I choose this point, the same point we can see is all these pockets at L and R um, are the same pockets that this point can see, can also be seen by this tri this region here below. And at some point it's obvious that if I'm low enough, okay, I can see all these intervals here and don't really have to worry. Um, but at least I cannot choose something above here. So this this is very helpful. And then also you remember that for track B these points were aligned so I can just build a small pocket which just says ah oh, you know you have to basi basically on the line maybe a little bit above but basically you have to be on the line. So if you combine this and this observation which and already for track B you have forced positions. But for track A, so let me go back so for track A here it doesn't work, but for track B, this would be the bottom part, we would have first positions by these two observations. Basically saying, okay, you have to be above this line, which I force by a small pocket, and by these pockets I already have, I know you can be either on the point or below, but not much more options there. Okay, putting things together. Um, now we, we f in order to force positions we have to do quite some tricks. Uh, so these are already forced by this pocket and these pockets. So these points here, okay, they are forced but they could also be below. Now I want to show that maybe I force them to positions on this point or above. So if you have to be either below this point or above this point, then you actually have to be on the point. And what we do is we build the same gadget from between these points and these points. So these are just unneeded additional points. Um, and we link those with those. Um, and now suddenly um, these points are also forced. And additionally we li also link these and these with those tricks. And then the more true p picture looks like this. But even here we see it. So the problem is that these things have to become really, really small to draw them um, realistically, and this distance here has to be huge. Um, so we have to sheet, but we hope that you get a picture of the whole thing. And yeah, thank you for watching, and uh, I hope you enjoy.